good idea as well. I've got this smart meter wired up. I'm going to plug it in and see what it does. Then we're going to do a little tear down and see how there's, um, what these are like inside. It's on. Yeah, BAZ's not moving at all. These things really don't use that much power on their own. Alright, let's press this button. No money. Connected. I hope that doesn't mean it's going to send it, um, the bills out. Because it better be a shame for the last customer when I get to overload this if I get a big bill. Hmm, not moving at all. Looks like we've got no killer whatever. Amps. KWAVARH. -A First of the 8th, 2012, when the date's right. No killer whatever is used. Amps, it's got, it's got like an amp uh, setting there too. C, or well, I think that's what it means. Reset. So, reading in the meter, I press button 1 to scroll through the display. So, I just did that, just demoed that. Display test 1, time hour, minutes, and seconds. 2, date. 3, kilowatt hours imported. So, yeah, yeah you got from the green, other in other words. 4, kilowatt hours imported element 1, come up rate A, then come up rate B, and C. That's current rate A. So the tariff, I think it is. Killer whatever is imported, element 2, the last one I first. No, appliances for 2 element meters only. Here, when I next got water heater, press and hold button 2 for 5 seconds to heat your water at any time. Click, a relay. Now it's boosted to run the hot water service. Okay, viewers, I've taken this little um, bag tie thingy majiggy off. That comes off there. Some sort of communications port there. That's probably where the light, uh, the meter programmer programs it. Or, looks like some wires come out of there. And there's a separate plug in module that sits on the top of those meters. Interesting. Let's start opening it up. Before I do that, come plug, safety first. Slides off just like that. And there's your wiring diagram. Very much the same as these ones. Line in, neutral in, line out, or load out, or neutral out, light out. So active in, neutral in, neutral out, light, uh, live out. These must be some, I don't know what they're for. It does say it's for solar and all that sort of stuff. It's not for a time switch, because they're internally programmed into these things. Anti-taper thing there, gotta get that off. Okay, screws are out. Cut that off. The side to test how strong that plastic was, and yeah, that broke the screw. So the plastic is actually strong enough to stop that from being broken. All right, not much in there. The safety device. Oh, that must go somewhere in here little button in there, so when you pull the terminal cover off, it turns itself off. So it's an unplug safety first um, mode there. Got the lattice and gear, writing on the board. Layer order, one. Backup battery, Japanese Panasonic BR2032, three volt lithium cell. There's a tip 42A there. This is a uh, HAB brand or oh, HDB brand surface mount capacitors. There's nothing much in these bloody things. What brand is this capacitor? Oh, it's a Japanese one. KXG series Nippon Chemicon. 350 volts, 68 microfarads. They're probably not going to last in the Great Australian summer, um, summer heat. What's the temperature rating? Oh, 105 degrees Celsius. Oh, yeah. Is a 14N821K MOV. Little transformer there. Voltage regulator there. Get me, uh, there it is, a light. Opto coupler, big resistor, little inductor, and the display uh, drivers in there. Lannis and gear, HIM, PCBA. So obviously RHS compliant, 
electrostatic uh, heat sensitive devices. No uh, contains no lead. You can't um, throw it in the bin, so it's got to be recycled properly. A little connector there, must be for programming. NEC 2561A. Look like opto couplers. There's a little. I'll take this um, display thing off so you can see the chips. All right. Uh, should just clip off. Nothing much to these bloody things. 13th week, 2011. It was uh, set, uh, made this this uh, meter. So, not even a year, and it's already stuffed up. Bloody thing. Token inductor. Little capacitor there. One of those little film ones. There's a TNY38OGN, and that must drive that transformer. Since this is all lead free solder, just imagine the problems you're going to get with these bloody things. Quartz crystal, that's uh, I think that's part of what drives a clock, and other synchronous parts of the meter. Alright, let's undo that some of these clips. Open it up. Little seal from the weather. Alright, let's. There, a clip there and a clip there. Alright, let's open it up. Okay, the that just clips off and you press them in and pop it out. It lifts off that assembly. Polycarbonate plastic, it all, it's all, it all is. Can't beat the old baker like BAZs. Here's a little bit of isolation from the high voltage input side. Those gaps in the board. Little tiny chips there, surface mount stuff. There's no chips where they've scratched the um, maker stuff off them. That's the must be the brain there. M16C, then it's got M3062, 6FHPGPC, U7, under that's got 1030300. The must be the brains in the meter there, I think. Do all your calculating and stuff like that. Communications port stuff. So that's, that goes to the display um, board there. Let's get this circuit board out. There's a couple of screws I've got to undo. One under there. And I can already see. It doesn't look like there's much metal under there. Okay, viewers, I undid some screws down there. I took the bus bars off the back um, casing. Undid some clips. And the terminal cover just comes, the terminal block assembly, which is polyurethane, I think. Um, it's screwed into the bus bars, which is soldered on through here under the board. This all should slide it as one assembly now. Ta -da. That that can take a hundred amps. Doesn't really look like it. It may for a little while, but I, I don't know for how long. 350 volt, 68 microfarad capacitor there. Another um, Mipon Chemicon KXG series. High temperature rated as a LXZ Nippon Chemicon, 1000 microfarad, 25 volt. Should be high temperature rated. Yep, 105 degrees. Another Nippon Chemicon, 2200 microfarad. Must be 275 volt or something like that. I guess they're all the same brand, they're good quality caps in here. Hmm, they're all Japanese capacitors. I wonder what sort of capacitors the Indian made smart meters have. There you go, I just got stuck and get that out of there. Oh, let's plug a light in so I can see better. It's getting a bit dark. I've also got this uh, WF time switch on charge. So it's got a tariff programmed into it, don't want to lose it. It's currently showing uh, 20, these are default 24 hour time. This is set to daylight savings. You can see a little um, contact over there. Switch contacts. Oh, let's get the light plugged in. Oh, right, there we've got a light. Polychlorinate, or oh, polycarbonate plus 10% GF. Uh, I forget what that stands for. Cheap, nasty, throwaway rubbish. 
good quality LED. I think one's an infrared and one's a pulse LED. So it's a red red pulsing LED. Which is a solid state equivalent of a load wheel. Which when it gets to that black mark there, your timing mark, to your marking on your faceplate is one revolution. Without LED flashing so many times is the equivalent to our mechanical meters. Alright. Again, another look at this board. The soldering's not too bad. They've got some flux crap left behind. It's revision 5, so I took a bit of attempts to get this to, get, uh, to turn out right. The LCD seems to be moulded in with some sort of backing plate to hold it into a bigger enclosure or clip that holds it on the board. The push buttons, they're pretty good quality. The surface mount components, they're, all, yeah, they're not dodgily soldered on. They're bloody small. Got all these resistors. Some little, I don't know what they are, they're some sort of regulators I think. Transistors. I can't hold the bloody thing still enough to read it. 2CW, then it's got 11 for the year it was made. 2CW, 2FX, little tiny transistors there. You can't, the camera won't pick them up, they're too small. Alright, put that one aside. Class look at this one. And there you go. That's sort of assembly there. As you can see, the soldering. It's supposed to take 100 amps. Eh, I don't think so. <laughs> Gruner, that's a relay for your boost for your hot water. 12 volt DC, 50R slash 50R, 40 amp, 250 volt AC. It's only a 40 amp relay. And it's got 704Q, R1A, BA50, 027, part number. And it's got this other wires going to it. It's going to this little uh, module here. That's also a Gruner relay. 12 volt DC. 32 watts slash 32 uh, <coughs> Excuse me. 100 amp, 250 volt AC. So that must be the one that um, gets switched off on you. So you need to ring up when you move in your house. And they'll press the button on the computer and that clicks that relay. So I communicate it to the bloody brains of this smart meter. And that turns this relay on, which turns your house on. So, I'm not off the contacts in that relay are bad. This is, I think, one of the reasons why this smart meter was um, defunct and thrown out. Soldering is not too bad in those bus bars. A little resistors there. There's a BYC, 4AY, a 10Y, V1T there. Can't really bloody see it. I think it's a capacitor of some sort. There's a surface mount resistor there. Big resistor there. Try and hold the camera right. There's another little chip there. It's got DS1337 and it's got 110382 plus 359AC. There must be way more advanced models because there's all this room, uh, room for more stuff that's left off the board. Another seal there. Yeah, that must be. So the 12, the 12 volt coil, this is a 12 volt power supply, part of the smart meter. Little tiny baby switch mode 12 volt power supply, which controls the relay's um, coils. So the communications part, there's no antenna or anything like that in here. Which I think is that little, little steel thing there. I can try and read that. Hard to read. 14 point M, about 14 megahertz or something like that. Got an oscillator of some sort. Then I, uh, try and wait, above that it's got 61x.b1. Yeah, very um, advanced this bloody technology. Some more little, uh, what look like. I don't know if they could pass those well, I can't remember now. Yeah, not very good with my surf uh, surface meta knowledge. Little inductor there. That's pretty much it, that's all that's in there, bloody things. Alright, let's reassemble it. Another thing I just noticed, they used to hear a LT, so load trigger. And that goes at the other relay. Little 40 amp one I showed before. 
Okay, but there was another thing I just noticed. I'm going to test what voltage comes out of this uh, trigger. And obviously we're going to get 240 volts. Let's go, I didn't come out of that, obviously. I'll just do a check anyway, to prove a point, and I'll test what these ones have got. It's got L1 and T, which is a trigger. Your 40 amp ones, so you need 240 amp uh, trigger things of some sort. Which I'm assuming is goes to something, something that runs on a certain voltage, a trigger, a relay or something. So, although that's for an inverter, when you're feeding power back to the grid, I don't know. But let's see what this um, voltage is, uh, come, if there's any there. Alright. AC volts. Let's get probing. Try and make, so you can see the meter and the um, terminal connections there. Yeah, 12.5, 12.6 volts AC there. There you go, it's going up. Yeah, it's regulated. Oh yeah. There you go, obviously you got here. And that's obviously your 240 volt out. 241.5 volts. Let's just test how clean that is. Power going in. 241.5 exactly. Coming out. 241.6 or 0.5 now. Obviously fluctuating there. Let's press some buttons and see if I can get that to do anything. Hold boost. I'll hold down the boost button for hot water. Alright, let's get a good view of that. Alright. Says to hold it for, there you go, click, five seconds. Let's see what this one does now. Okay, it's off. There you go, that's a must, goes to your hot water boost. Obviously triggers a big relay of some sort. Alright, and there you go. Thanks for watching.